maneno yananitosha juu ya kusema majabu yako maneno yananitosha juu ya kusema majabu yako Any person who wants to make a try 
of an ordinance? Yes. The religion practice or a religious practice or a ritual. Or a decree, or a decree that describes a religious act. Okay, let, let's see. An, an ordinance, the ordinances are just like a, a religious practice. Something that we, we, we practice, something that we, we practice and endure to it some spiritual aspect. It is something that you are practicing, like in to na endo to na iweke some spiritual value or spiritual uh, aspect of, of it. So, like uh, like he was he was talking about a religious act or function, and we have as as many ordinances as we can call them, and different churches adhere to different ordinances. Now, I. If you look there, there is the, the Roman Catholic. Let, let me talk about the Roman Catholic, first of all. And the Roman Catholic has seven ordinances. They also call them the sacraments. So if you hear the words ordinances, we are also talking about sacraments. And, we you know, they have seven of them. The first one is baptism. The other one is what we call the Eucharist or the Lord's table. Another one is confirmation. And then penance or paying for purging, something like that. And then we have extreme auction. Then we have holy orders. Now all these are actually what they believe in as a religious practice that has spiritual values. Now out of the list, of course we understand baptism, right? Ubatizo is exactly what we do here. Yeah? To now, yeah, by the way, you have the latest experience. Buenas, if you were. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm celebrating my one month anniversary, Kesho, after getting baptized. She's celebrating one month anniversary, Kesho, your baptism, to, 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 to pick my coffee. Unajua? One month, one month, kama badu kuko, one month, we can always kukuosha ili to endeleze. Okay, so... Baptism is exactly what happened in, the, in, in here, and that's what we'll be talking about today. And then we have the Eucharist, the Eucharist or the Lord's Table. That's exactly what we did today in our service for those who are in the service. That's what we, we did, and I think Reverend took us through that very well. And then we have confirmation. Confirmation. Ni nani anailewa confirmation? Yeah? Kupewa jina. Kushika mtoto, sindo? Na kuwekelea mikono. We, we confirm somebody in relation to the religion. And then we have penance, paying of purging. Nani ameskia yo? Have you ever heard about that? This, this guy seems like he went through the process, Kidogo. So that, you know, there are times in the history of, of Christianity that... Uh, no, let me let me put it this way. How many have attended a Roman Catholic burial? A, a mass. What happens? Do you see people taking something? Yeah? Fruits? Bread? Yeah, in a light note, it is it is it is a penance, it's called a penance, paying for purging. Now not all Rome Catholics believe in this today, but some really practice it of late. They even today. And so what they do is, when you die, you get to a place called the purgatory. Right? You get to a place called the purgatory, and in that purgatory, if your sins were lenient, then you can be confirmed from there to get something better. 
In other words, your sins will be purged. That is the word, the purgatory comes from the, the, this word purged. So your sins will be purged, will be, will be for, forgiven. And sometimes, the reason, what, that, the reason why your sins will be forgiven is your good deeds. And one of the good deeds is paying for the penance. Now that is that ordinance. And then we have extreme auction um, that is also known as last rite. This is anointing with oil that is administered to a dying person. That also not many of them is done today. But at least there's some oil that is uh, placed on some people who have died. Uh, an ex extreme auction so that we bless you even as you go. Now maybe one day I will be talking, I think it is in our schedule when I will be talking about the doctrine of death. And we will be, we'll be repeating these things and looking at how they work. And then the holy orders. Ordinations to the priesthood or deaconesses. And I think, have you, have you seen different churches, Roman Catholics, having different names? Some are called St. Peter. Some are St. Saint, Saint Mary's, St. Andrew's, Benedict, Paul, uh, Paul the second. These are orders. There is a flow of orders. And right now, why, why is, who, who is the, 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 the uh, how do you call them? The Pope. The Pope is? Pope Francis the? The, the sixth. So you know what that means is that in the order of Franciscan order, he is the sixth person to become a Pope. So if you see somebody the 12th or the 26th, that means that in that order, their order is the 26th person to be ordained as a priest in that order. And so to that, that they adore as one of the ordinances. So I was just talking about the seven ordinances of the, Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church so that we can understand that. Now, about evangelical churches. Evangelical churches... Um, and, and now I'm talking, when I talk about evangelical churches, I'm talking about mostly uh, churches like AIC, maybe a baptism, a Baptist church, uh, maybe SEK, mm, to, uh, and, and many other evangelical churches. Of course, nowadays, even the Pentecostal churches like Deliverance, Deliverance Church is inclined to evangelical nature. And so, and, and some AICs, AICs means African independent churches, most of them are, are coming into evangelical churches. Now we, we mostly believe in four ordinances. Not really believe, but practice four ordinances. I've not said we don't believe in the, the ones that I've mentioned, the seven. But now the first one is baptism. The other one is Lord's table. The, the other one is child dedication. That is why imetangazo wa patarea inye tutakuwa tunafanya child dedication, right? And then another one is holy matrimony. You know what you believe in is that, uh, Karo, you, you don't just come and meet me along the way and say, Pasi, you know what? Iliandanga. Ilienda wapi? I mean, Iliolewa ujui. Iliolewa kitambo. What we encourage that we have a church matrimony. But even if you get married, lakini ya kwa kanisa, Next time I will call you to the office and I say, do you want to solemnize your marriage? So that it happens a holy matrimony. So that is one thing that we believe as well. God willing, God will be giving us time to be looking at them. But today, I want us to look at, at, at baptism itself. And different ways of administering baptism. But maybe before that, when you look at generally the ordinances are... Uh, just, just have the slide. I'm saying that the Catholic view all this as means of salvation. That makes people more fit to receive justification from God. Now, this is the difference. I want you to get the differences. All the ordinances that I've mentioned, both the ones that are practiced by the evangelicals or the Catholics, the evangelicals believe that these are symbols of God's grace. The extreme Roman Catholic believes that these are means of justification. Now that is important for you to note. 
so that all these things are means of justification. In fact, there is a moment that the Catholic Church met and discussed what people say about the ordinances because there was a discussion about the ordinances and they said, no, the ordinances are just symbols. And they were like, no, the ordinances are not symbols. And in one of the treaties that what they wrote, they said, if you don't believe that, then you are an, an athema. An athema is that you are a caste, if you don't believe that. That all these things are means of justification. It is good to know that this, I believe, is a symbol, and we will see how it works. Now let's look at this. Difference in administration. An ordinance is an earthly symbol of a spiritual reality. It is an act symbolizing a covenant of agreement with the Lord. Now, if, if I baptize somebody, what I'm trying to do is that you are symbolizing your public confession of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we ask you a question. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Then you say, yes. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy. So that this is a public proclamation of what has happened in your life, of what has happened in my life in relation to our relationship with the Creator, our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is an act in anticipation of a blessing from heaven. It is an act of obedience. See God, I have publicly proclaimed what you have done inwardly in my life. And so that commands and, and as being said by Elder John Widson. Baptism has been part of Christianity from the start. It has been part of Christianity from the start as shown by the many mentions in Acts. If you read the book of Acts of the Apostles and mostly the Pauline epistles. You know the Pauline epistles? Yeah? Pauline epistles, if you hear somebody talk about Pauline epistles, he's talking about all the books that have been written by Paul. So one of the Pauline epistles is? Uh-huh. One of the Pauline epistles? Corinthians? So when I, when I, yeah? Galatians? By the way, how many books did Paul write? We have 13. That is in the Bible, of course. We, there is an argument about one of the first, one of the June, one of the Corinthians. Eh? One of the Corinthians uh, got lost somewhere. We don't know. But of course, what we have is enough, right? And then there is also still divisions of ideas whether Hebrew is part of Pauline epistles or not. We are not getting into that. But what you are saying is that if you look at the Pauline epistles and you look at the book of Acts of Apostles, you see a lot of baptism, even in the early church. Christians and the Bible uh, points at Jesus to have instituted the sacrament of baptism. By the way, baptism is not just an ordinance of the church. It is instituted by Jesus Christ himself. If it is just something of the church, then remember what I said when I was introducing the doctrine. I said there are church dogmas and there are also biblical dogmas. There are biblical doctrines and church doctrines. And I said, with church doctrines, they can change. For instance, at some point, ladies walikuwa wana kuja kwa kanisa na nguo nyeupe na wamefunga kitambaz. Amu kuona? Saizi nikidikri next Sunday mukuje na nguo nyeupe na mufunga kitamba. Nitaubiria wanaume hapa. Tutaubiria tu wanaume hapa. Dan peke yake atajileta na Dan pia namkazia jeans. <laughs> the next time all of us will be at Sitam. Or we go somewhere else. So church doctrines, church dogmas can change. But when I'm talking about this baptism as an ordinance, the fact that it was started by Christ, instituted by Christ, make it something that we must approve of and live with. However, the ordinance of baptism has caused a lot of division among churches and among Christians today. 
and I've just given examples of, of, of divisions that are there. One is, who should be baptized? Who should be baptized? What, is, what do you think? Who should be baptized? Who should be baptized? The one who has accepted Jesus Christ. The one who has accepted Jesus Christ. Who should be baptized? The same. Whoever has accepted Christ and is willing to follow the same path of Christ. Should be baptized. Have you ever seen children being baptized? Child baptism? Yeah? Do you, no, the, the question is, who should we baptize? Should we baptize a child or should we baptize an adult or saved and saved everybody? You know, everyone. Eh, who should be baptized? The one who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, right? No. Now that is one point of division. The second thing is, where should baptism take place? Should we have baptism in the pool or we have baptism in something that has been created? These are difficult questions, right? We have our own creation here. A friend of mine also, now let me, let me not get to that fast, but another question is how? How should we do the baptism? Forward or backward? I have a friend of mine who believes anaenda mbele na anajipeleka yeye mwenyewe. Apelekwi. Unajua si wachungaji tumependa ku 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 feri watu. Anasema yeye anataka anasimama alafu anajipeleka kimbele mbele. Alafu hiyo hiyo story imeishi hapo hivyo. Some people say you go backward. Questions about baptism that are bringing divisions among us. Another thing is what it really means to a believer, and of course I've just given you a hint between the differences. And then another question that I don't think it's there is, how? Kuna watu wana wanyo alibaptizwa kupitishwa bandera? Bwana sifiwe? Yeah, sindio? Wengine wana batizwa aje, meri unakami hivi, and then unapitishwa bandera, we umebatizwa. Uyo meria mebatizwa kupitishwa bandera. We unakam, naona kuna maji hapa. Kwa kia kama salaba, kwa ambia you are good to go. Wewe endanga. Na mwingine, what other means? Eh? Sprinkles, right? Maji na sprinki wa kichwa kiasi, sindo? Yeah. Ladies will agree for... Oh, okay. I will... Uh, ladies, ladies and water... Upstairs, no, same thing. Those are different things, right? But that is part of it. And then Pastor Luke will come and say, Ata niki kupeleka na ni realize kwamba hauja ingia yote, nita kurudia. Nalazimu ingie kule ndani. Yani, you be submerged inside water. And so we are like, what are we supposed to follow? And I've, I've said that these confusions are because of two reasons. The first reason is people don't want to seek what the Bible says about baptism. And then the second reason is that when we interpret the Bible to fit our own selfish ends and to create unnecessary uniqueness. Unnecessary uniqueness. Two reasons. People don't want to seek what the Bible says. By the way, people don't have much time for the Bible. Just ask yourself a question. Give yourself a percentage between what, everything you do and the time you take with the Bible. Bible ina inachukua percentage ngapi? Kama ngapi hivi? Jijibu. Ukipata 0.3 umejaribu. People don't have time for the word of God. And so we don't really know these things. But we as AIC Milimani youths, we must create the difference. Amen? We must create the difference. That is why we are doing all these things. Nobody will ever confuse us there. But again, it has two blessings. When people look at the Bible for direction. And two, the purpose is godly and not human. If the purpose is godly and not human, things will be well. 
What does the Bible say? Baptism should involve complete immersion in the water. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't involve sprinkling. It doesn't involve rubbing on the forehead. It doesn't involve flagging. What the Bible says, Mimi, ni mesoma bibilia buwana desmon. Sijai yona pali. The Bible says, na mutu wakabatizu wana kabandera. And you know, I just sit somewhere and I'm asking, where on earth did these people come with this creative idea that Bandera can do? Mimi, I read the Bible and I don't see anywhere where somebody was baptized. I can sprinkle you. Maji. I'm a rabbi with forehead. Let's look at the Bible today because that is the reason. By the way, youth ministry, there is similar money. We handle hard stuff. I think this is the level where we are. Sindio, we handle real things. Real things. And God is going to take us. Because <laughs> I was telling another person that as at AIC Milimani, every time we can shags, now when the church shags, lazimu pewe nafasi ya kusalamia watu. That you are being given into Sometimes that our kuambi Unaka to Palivi, Unawekwa na elders, come away, Unajulikana Kochachi home, Kurangina or Julikani, Unawekwa na elders, and then program in and delay, program in and delay, and then Unaskia program a womb, Zena Sama, Naleo to Nashkuru Mungu Sana. And then Jared, Ukopala, and you are like, hey. when that comes, just think of what we are learning. Stand up and tell them about the Holy Spirit that we learned last time. Amen. Stand up and tell them about baptism that we are learning today. Because you have the word in you. Now let's look at the Bible. Let's look at the Bible if you can get me. Uh, that's the word used for baptism in the Bible is the word baptizo. You fresh sack or you fresh book, Baduko? When do you want to say Yanga Kusoma is man and Ungumum? The word used in the Bible for baptism is baptizo. Now, baptizo means it means to dip, it means to plunge, it means to immerse. It means, you know, doing something in water. I told you, that is why I really don't know how creative other people can be to come up with sprinkling. Now, nimeongeza kitu wapo nikasema, a close word, bapto, which means to bath or to wash. Has confused some people, some of them are even scholars. Like, of course, you know, you've read the books maybe for a friend, he's called Bakov. He is a, he's one person who thinks that, that baptism can be equal to sprinkling. He writes that because I think he, this is my thinking, he translates baptizo and he confuses it with the word bapto. Bapto means taking bath. Or, you know, just sprinkling, just, just you wash yourself. But those are two different words in Greek. It is baptizo, it is not bapto. Now, the Greek word for rantizo could have been used when it was supposed to be sprinkling. I want you to get these three words because these are what disturbs people. We are getting into the Bible, remember? I'm saying if, if it was a sprinkling, then... There is a Greek word for sprinkling. But the Bible did not use that Greek word for sprinkling. It did not use the word rantizo. It used baptizo. It did not use bapto to mean taking a bath. It used baptizo. And so if you look at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 13, the Bible says, if the sprinkling, and in that one, the Bible has used rantizo. Hebrews 9.21, he sprinkled with blood. The Bible has used rantizo. Hebrews 10.22, 
sprinkled clean from an evil. The Bible has used rantizo. But now, when it comes to baptism, the Bible does not use that word. So that it can never be, it should never be, just about sprinkling, because that is what the Bible says. Read your Bible well, my friend. That is where I want us to finish. Reading our Bible well. If you just read your Bible well, you're good to go. Read your Bible well. In Mark chapter 1 verse 5, people were baptized by John in the river Jordan. The Greek text has that word. In Greek, that one is in. Meaning in. And not a word for besides or near. There is, there is a, a preposition for preposition for besides or for near. But the Bible says people were baptized in water. In means yeah? inside, right? Inside River Jordan. In Mark chapter 1 verse 10, after Jesus had been baptized, the Bible says he came out of <laughs> he came out of what? How many are getting what I'm saying? In a ad, in a ad, in a ad, in a, in a, in a, in a ad, sasa. We are trying to demystify all these things that are around. Now, how can you come out of if it was a bandera? How can you come out of a flag? How can you come out of a sprinkling? You know, where are you from? I've come out of being sprinkled. Now, that doesn't add up. The Bible says, he came out of, out of water. Again, the Greek word used is ek, is a preposition. That means out of. and doesn't mean any other thing. What symbol does it bring? The symbol of union with Christ in his life and death. Burial and resurrection seem to point at complete immersion. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, 3 to 4, and Colossians 2, 12, that it is, it is, it is a symbol of being dying with Christ and being raised together with him. It, it is, this is a symbol of union, union with Christ in his life and death. Burial and resurrection. You are a partaker of the things that Christ went through. Can you imagine... Being sprinkled or flagged means death, burial, and resurrection. Now, can you just imagine that? Ume sprinkle you, alafu na kuambia, mutu wa metoka kwa sprinkle, and then what does that symbolize? And then, unajua nili sprinkle wa maji, na ika mean dying and rising with Christ. Or nili pitishu wa bandera, and that means dying and rising with Christ. And you're trying to look at these people and you're saying, I think you need to go to some good English class. And just rethink about your words as far as English is concerned. My friends, let me tell you. If we youths today don't have the word of God, then all of us will be in Project X. If you don't have the word, we have no, what, what, what do we have to defend ourselves? All of us will be in Project X, and they will confuse us, and all of us will be there. Yani, just try to imagine, Euphrates, all our youths, eh? Sijini tarengapi? Wanasama tarengapi? I know Mercy is really passionate about that area, and she's, she's doing a good job. Praise God for you. They are trying to reach out and do all that they can just to, to break this satanic ideal. But if we don't have the word, we are done. But if we have the word, my friend, a youth member asked me, Pastor, where should I get a, a house? I said, I have a pub. This is rental house I have are you born again? Yes. Are you sure you're born again? Yes. No me pata nyumba. Eh. Karibu na pub. Eh. So when do we shikwani kwa nino jalipa? 
If you have the word, it doesn't matter where you are, my friend. If you have the word, it doesn't matter where you are. When I know there are times that pastors were not supposed to pass close to a pub, but now the problem is, then you will not walk. Because pubs are all over, everywhere along the, the, the road. So, so, so you, you don't walk. Or you find your own path. But mimi utembea pale. If I have the word, I have the word. That word is enough to protect me. Now, look at this. Just by understanding one word against the three words will help you to understand baptism. Only the three words are one, ni? baptizo, another one, ni? bapto, and another one, ni? rantizo. Just understanding the three will help you to argue out your point out there. That the word used for baptism is baptizo. Not bapto, which means sprinkling. And not rantizo. It, it, it isn't. It is bap, bap, baptizo. So let's get that word and let's get it right. It's not taking bath. Can you, I've told you that you, I personally I can't imagine that mtu mwenye amepitishwa wa bandera anakuja na sema I've died and resurrected with Christ. Now those things doesn't match. You know when you are doing uh, symbolism, at least you relate the symbol to the communication you want to make. That's what I was told when, when, when I was doing my public speaking or communication. You, you don't stand like this and, and say, you know, that thing was too big. You, know, you don't communicate like that. Did you see that thing? It was too big. Too big. And the other one at the corner was too small. No, you don't communicate like that. If it is too big and you want to show a symbol of big, then you say it's big. The New Testament teaches that baptism should be administered only to those who give a believable profession of faith. Now, I don't have any apology for anybody who loves me when I tell them that I don't believe in baptize, baptizing somebody who has not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I read my Bible. My Bible tells me every time that baptism is for them who acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. How did you feel? You experienced this one month ago, right? Did it, you know, how did you feel that? You were born again and then you were baptized. How many like me were baptized before being born again? Uli baptizua, ile ile ya kusoma katikizim and then ukai tumukizwa. Mimi ni mmoja wao. Beba tumikono. Beba tumikono. Si mimi mebeba. Mora, uh, Nash, Mary. Uh -huh. You know, ile il, il trend ya wazazi. Hmm? Ebu guza hapa. Ukisha guza hivi, unafaa kuenda kwa baptism class. Eh? Ukiweza kuguza. And then, tukaenda. Danya mai. You went through the process of water without, without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and you know, those people who don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, they're the ones who are getting A's. They were getting 100%, 100 over 100 of those exams. Kama mimi, nasi jichoche. 100 over 100. Nasina yesu. Nikapitisho huko ndani. Nikarudi, nangale ujama, ajui. When I got born again, I'm not, it's not something that you have to do. But when I got born again, I went to the pastor and I told them, I now realize, some people say I'm a little radical. I'm not. And I said, I now realize what salvation is. Now, I have two options. To believe, to, 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 to backdate my baptism and say, Sasa ninajua maana ya kile nilefanya. The other option is to redo it so that I can have meaning of it. And so I opted for the second reason. So I went to the pastors. They took me to the, to the leadership. 
and told them I want to be baptized because right now I know. And I found a spiritual pastor filled with the Holy Spirit, able to see the spiritual things, took me. And I got baptized. At least when I know and I understand. You don't need to do that. You just need to backdate that ile kenye ilifanyika ilifai fanyike sasa are we together so that is baptism that is what the bible says baptism which is a symbol of beginning the christian life should only be given to those who have in fact begun christian lives who should be baptized act chapter 2 verse 41 then those who gladly receive his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Now you didn't, you didn't hear that. Then those who gladly received his word were, were baptized. Acts chapter 8 verse 12 the Bible says, But when they believed, Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized when they believed. Acts chapter 10, verse 44, 48. It's a question it's asking, can anyone forbid water to those who are filled with the Holy Spirit? And last time we were looking at what it means to be filled by the Holy Spirit is those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit. Those who are under control of the Holy Spirit. No, those who are not under control of the flesh. Who can forbid water for them? Acts chapter 16 verse 31, 33. Lydia hid to the word. Then who was baptized? Now who? If the Bible says that, what else can we believe? So are you baptized before you were saved? What are the things... What are you doing with that reality? Were you baptized after salvation? I'm also asking you a question. What are you doing with that reality? Now let me get to the, this question. Is baptism important? Is baptism important? Yeah? How many have not been baptized here? If you're not baptized. Yes? Yes? Is baptism important? My, my answer is yes. Why? Jesus himself commanded baptism to those who have been preached to. It is such important, my friends. You are not doing it to fit into good membership. You're doing it because Jesus Christ commanded us to do it. Amen. I want to do it because Jesus Christ has commanded me to do it. Not because I can be a partaker, a meza. That should be a plus to it. Blessings of baptism. Let me just share some blessings of baptism if you're not baptized here. That one, God's favor that comes with all obedience will come to you. There is joy that comes from public profession of your faith. There is joy that comes with the fact that everybody has understood, everybody has known that I am born again. Now they will not corner me. I have joy. Reassurance of having a clear picture of dying and raising with Christ and so washing away our sins. You are reassured. It encourages our faith as well in the Lord. I have a baptism like any other ordinance, and if I don't mention that, I will not be helpful to all of us. However, baptism, like any other ordinance, is not equal to salvation. It is important because it has attachment of blessings. The blessings of reassurance that you have died and resurrected with Christ. The blessings that you are proclaim publicly what God has indeed done in your life. 
the blessings of, you know, you just refreshed being in the Lord Jesus Christ. But what I'm saying is that baptism, like any other ordinance, is not equal to salvation. It isn't. And it's not salvation as well. He who believes, the Bible says in Acts chapter, Mark chapter 16, verse 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Somebody asked me a question, Pasi, what about Mark chapter 16, verse 16? And the question was based on that con uh, conjunction and. He who believes and is baptized. Now, we, you and I know that when the conjunction and is used, it is not a, an option, right? So it is, it is something that is affirmative. In other words, they can come and tell you like they told me that believing and baptism are all necessary for salvation. But this is what I will say. Look at the B part of it. Look at the B part of it. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Now, that has no baptism. The, the latter has no baptism. That alone should tell somebody that Acts chapter 16 verse 16 is not alluding to the fact that if you believe and you are baptized is when you can be saved. Because if you look at the latter part of it, but he who does not believe is condemned. In other words, it is silent about the baptism in that place. Because you can be baptized, but you don't believe. If you don't believe, you will be condemned. Are we together? Then, what about, what about Luke chapter 23, verse 43? And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, who was Jesus talking to? Yeah? The, 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 the thief, right? When did that thief get born again? In history of the Bible. kwa I know that you are the son of God. I believe that you are the son of God. Ukienda, uko pali uo naendanga poa, na miu ni kumbuki. Eh? Hapo tu, alafu, Yesu Christo anamungilesha nasema, Truly, truly, I say to you, that today you will be with me in paradise. Alibat, when was he baptized? The repenting, this poor repenting thief was not baptized. But because of the belief that he had in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ declared to him that you will be with me in the paradise. So baptism is not equal to salvation. It should not even be attached to it. So my friends, today we are talking about baptism as something new. If, if you have something new, you've had something new today, this afternoon. Just, let me just see if you have something new. You've had something new today? Let's go out there and teach others. Let's go out there and teach others. I will take just two questions and then we'll be worshiping and praying. Two or three. You have a question? Right. Mine is. Uh, Use this because of the. Uh, mine is. Uh, somebody asked me, Will I get be baptized again? Because the moment I received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I was baptized that day. The second question is that. Uh, mm, is there a need for me to go through catechism for me to be baptized? I didn't get the first one well. Somebody was born again immediately a cow baptized. Now, 
or it was a crusade and then he, he, he was preached to and, that, and then he was baptized. In reality, in reality, when I look at the Bible, in reality, I don't see a problem. The problem can be if something is administered to me, something that I don't know the meaning. So that is the only problem I have. In reality, the Bible talks about not somebody who has been baptized for three years to be baptized, uh, who is saved for three years to be baptized. The Bible says, and those who believe were baptized. So ideally, he went through a good process, and I don't think he needs to be baptized again. However, my only problem is that somebody should take them through a discipleship class of knowing exactly what he or she did. Like, those who are here and are not baptized and are planning for baptism, I think you are going to be the best student ever. Because you are now going, having understood and been in this place to hear this. You are blessed. Right. Thank you. Number two. Should somebody go through some class to be baptized? In fact, I even answered it in the, in the way I was answer, answering the first question. You remember that? I need to know what is being administered to me. Now, bapt, uh, baptism, catechism class is taking you through what you are supposed to know about what you are supposed to be done to you. And who doesn't want that? I like that. I like to be told... I don't know whether I'm sometimes critical, but I like to be told very well, clearly, what you want to do for me. You know, you don't, you don't just come to me and say, Mi naona kama uso yako, inaitaji mafuta. Na you mafuta, lazima you have No, you have, to, you have to explain to me, why vaselin? Kwa nindi tusitumie ngombe? So, catechism class is important because it is a real theology to teach you basics of what you are getting into. Thank you. Pastor, I, I have a challenge. Yeah? And for us students, you know, in the university we find scholars. And uh, master students, PhD, bachelor degree students. And they challenge you so much. You know, baptism is a contested concept for those who are scholars. So what happens now, we understand that baptism means immersion to a lot of water. But the question is, and we get a lot of challenge from these other people who are in the world, but they do challenge us as Christians. So the question is, when we baptize people or when we baptize believers, do we baptize them backward or forward? Because I've been trying to look at the Bible, I can't see the two words. So, and it brings a confusion in me. So can you make that clarification? You, you sensed I posed the question and I did not answer. I did not answer because personally, by the way, I'm a believer in the Bible. I love the Bible. And, and anything that is in the Bible is for me. Anything that is not in the Bible, I will, I will, I will get answers above. Now, I even tried to look at maybe the Greek word of, of, of that baptism. Baptizo has only an idea of immersion, dipping, but it doesn't have the style. I think the style is concerned with the administrator. For instance, when I baptize people, I baptize people on the left. There are some pastors who have the strength on the right, and so they baptize people on the right. If, if there are some people who are used to, you know, going backward symbolizes some humility. There are a lot of reasons for that. There are people who humility is actually going forward. If somebody comes to me there, Na niambie, pasi unajua mimi napenda kuenda mbele. Mimi nitamuambia, lakini badu utaenda na u, u, ujifunike kabisa. Kama utajifunika, tuende. <laughs> I, 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 I will not see any problem, the style, so long as it is immersion. But you also want to give me an easy work to take you, ferry you kidogo, at least some good journey, and then you come back. Uh, my question is based on... Oh, you cannot keep quiet the whole session, yeah. 
my question is based on a practice that I have a practice that I've seen f since I was young. This is a question of questioned so many people. And that is one of the reasons I was not baptized up to today. I have always had a challenge, not with the catechism classes, but with the exams. Uh, I don't fear exams personally, but I've had experience with someone, and I put the catechism classes, and a part of 45, who is a believer of Jesus Christ is saved, and I'm will not be baptized. They undergo the second class, and a part of 40. So what is the criteria of us putting 50% of the pass mark when it's not biblical? <laughs> Who has been in here? I see enough. <laughs> Um, now, so that person goes to class several times and apata 42. 40%. Like, I'm going to go I wouldn't have any problem with the marks. I wouldn't have any problem with the marks. Uh, and I think the questions need to be restructured. I've seen the questions uh, here. They are really restructured well. Not not for objectivity, but also not for subjectivity, but at least they are supposed to be understanding-based questions. Understanding-based question. The only problem that we have maybe with our system of education and it has found ways in, in, in the church as well, is that we only think of a passing with over 50%. Now, I don't want to get into that because I will get into that with some educational people are maybe to tell me. But I am, um, I think the question should be understand, understanding based questions. They're supposed to be uh, questions that test, did you just understand not only that question, but did you understand that doctrine? For instance, one of the things that, you're being, that is being taught in the catechism is the, the doctrine of the end times. Isn't it? Or the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Let me use the Holy Spirit because that's what I taught here. I don't, don't want to come and tell you what was the Greek word for Holy Spirit. I just come and say, write for me maybe a half a page of what you understand about Holy Spirit based on our, our class. And then I will, I will know what to do. Now, I also have a problem with that. If I find somebody like that, I will help. Thank you. Oh, by the way, you are, you are a catechism teacher here. Buona sifiwe. Now stand. This guy is a catechism teacher here. Please, don't, when somebody gets 30%. Yes. I, we, we don't believe, we, even we don't take the, we don't mark versus the, the book that we, we took you through. We only look, did you understand? Thank you. And that is it, right? So we are here, we are here, here we are good, so you need to join. Okay, concerning his question that he asked, uh, you say that uh, baptism symbolizes the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if it symbolizes that. Uh, so when somebody dies, how do you parry that person? Do you parry him facing up or down? According to this question. When somebody dies, how do you baptize that person? How do you? Oh, how do you bury the person who has died? Oh, I told you I will, be, I, will, I will be talking very soon about the doctrine of death. And let, let, me, let me just say something. And resurrection. It symbolizes the death and resurrection, but not literal death. Not, not, not literal death of humanity. So that we say, people when they die, they, they, they are buried like this, and so we need to be baptizing people like this. I, I, don't, think that, that is, I don't think that's the direction. Um, but, but I, so let, let me say, I don't think we need to go thinking of people who are dead and how they are supposed to be buried against how, Jesus, because we are talking about death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that is different from humanity. And uh, we don't know how Jesus died, whether here or there like that. He died on the cross. Actually, he died vertically. Res mix. Uh. 
Uh, for me, it's a question that I've encountered several people. So, that someone had been baptized maybe in high school or something, and then by then they they had not understood what it means to be baptized. To be baptized. So, after understanding the meaning, should they should that person encounter should that person be baptized again or what should be done you you had mine you you can do two things you can you can now place your salvation in perspective and say the salva- the, the baptism that was done to me has now meaning for my salvation and uh, if you want to go the direction i went you can come to my office personally i went and I said, I want to do it again. I want to do it again. So in, in, either way it can work. We, we don't repeat, we don't repeat uh, baptism. We don't repeat baptism, but uh, you can backdate and give significance to your salvation of what happened to you. Yes, what happened to you? You can come and pass the class and you go through. Yeah, you just go through the doctrines to understand it and then you are not baptized. Yes, thank you. Mix the last person, please. You you want to use this? Thanks for this. It's quite helpful. Uh, My question is on John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. Uh, John the Baptist used to baptize people as a sign of repentance and uh, he baptized Jesus also and for Jesus' sake it was to show, I don't know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, his human side and when we get baptized now we symbolize the dying and uh, now living, the same way Christ died and now living again, like dying to self and a new life. So um, I'm trying to connect the dots between the two. There's, before John the Baptist, there was no Jesus, but he was baptizing. And then now there's after Jesus and we get baptized because of the life and death of Jesus. I don't know, you understand my question? Thanks. Um, I think when John the Baptist, Baptist was baptizing, and I think he even made that statement when he was introducing Jesus Christ. Eh? You remember, he met the people there and says, I was baptizing you with, with water. But now, the one who is coming, will baptize with eh? fire. And of course, we, uh, we were talking about, uh, Revo was teaching us on Wednesday, one of the days about fire. And that has the power identity. He's coming with the power. And then John is saying, the one whose shoes I cannot fit. So John himself realized that he was doing the baptism, a symbol of or baptism, just a symbol of baptism, maybe to show righteousness or something. But Jesus Christ brought a new meaning, a new meaning to the whole baptism. He brought a new meaning with the power. That is why we are baptized in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we are baptized in his name. Yeah, I'm coming. I said last, but because uh, I don't meet you more often, I don't want you to go out there and say, you're a pastor and a pastor when you're not Okay, thank you. So I have a question. Personally, I was baptized in ACK, and then I've been brought up in here, I see. So it's like here, I see, they don't recognize the other baptism from other churches. So my question is, way back at my church at home, when there is solely communion, they, do, they say if you are not baptized in here, yeah, I see, you are not supposed to participate. So I don't know, maybe you can ask me. Um, you know, I'm a staunch AIC member. And I'm a teacher of catechism. If you are baptized through immersion, anywhere you've been baptized, AIC recognizes that. AIC recognizes that. 
Now, what happens? You will not be baptized again. But what happens if you came from another doctrine? Or You know, we are talking about church doctrines, right? You go through just some classes. You go through, some, through classes just to understand what AIC is all about so that you can fit into the membership. You don't feel one out. But of course, they recognize that. They recognize it. What you do is that you just confirm, you bring a confirmation from that church, and then you bring to the pastoral team, they will talk to you, or the, the people in charge, they will talk to you, and then you will be confirmed into be a partaker of the Lord's table. So long as it was immersion, ukipitishwa bendera, tunakurudia apa. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, was that helpful? Okay, God bless you so much. I'm very, very happy. Uh, we've not talked about the Lord's table. So next time, God willing, will give us time, we'll talk about the Lord's table. And God is going to take care of us. I'm very, very delighted. Mix, as you come, I'm very, very delighted to be teaching these things so that we know what we really believe. Amen? Amen? Yeah, so Mix, as you come, Desmond is there. You've seen Desmond? Yes. Where, where is he? And you know, this guy cannot just go and sit there without playing that thing. So can we help Mix to stand and then we just, we just uh, sing one stanza and then we pray?